Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is DIY Dave with a really different project for you today. We're in the kitchen in my house, and the other day we turned on the oven to cook some supper, and we were confronted with this code. As it goes into the warm up process in just a second, you will see it pop up. with an F96 code. That F96 code maps to a blower motor failure. The blower motor, the blower motor inside this guy is hidden somewhere inside the control area. It's a little difficult to see. It's toward the back. We've already ordered the replacement part for it and we're gonna show how we're gonna to try to replace it. This is a big job. It's gonna be a two-person job for sure. You need to take the doors off. You need to take the uh, shelves and the racks out of the oven first. You need to remove the screws that hold the frame in place in the, in the uh, cutout in your cabinet. Uh, and then we're going to have a platform to receive the oven to hold it because it's a couple hundred pounds dead weight So I'm gonna have my son uh, help me pull this thing out We'll show as much as we can up close the rest will have the camera on a tripod and then show you how we replace the blower motor So let's get started Now the number one most critical safety thing to take advantage of here is to make sure that we cut the power to the oven That is the circuit breaker here. It's this coupled dual 40 amp breaker uh, we're gonna turn that thing off and that cuts the power to the oven to risk uh, eliminate any risk of personal electrical injury since we will be dealing with uh, replacing wires and circuitry. Okay, now we have, just to show, we just turned the power off out of the circuit breaker. So the oven is dead, no power to the oven, we're completely dark. So we are now electrically safe from any, uh, any shock risk. So the next step is we've already taken the oven racks out. They're out and sitting on the side. And the uh, next thing we're gonna do for the sake of simplicity, it's not required, but for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna remove these doors, make it a little bit easier to handle. That amounts to taking off, uh, opening the door flat, and then removing the screw from the hinge from the frame with this little screw, that's a, there's an Allen wrench, an Allen heading, an Allen wrench head. Uh, for that particular screw, release those on both sides and then we will rotate the hinge down to the unlocked position and then uh, rotate the door up and then lift it out. Do not grab the door by the handle. At the heavy uh, part of the door is down here. If you do it up from up here, the weight when it comes free will swing out and you risk dropping the door breaking the glass, bad thing. Bad things will happen. Once we remove the doors, then we have mounting screw here there's only one along this frame one right here and then one right there just a regular screw and we have similar screws right here and right here so we have four screws and then the plan will be before we pull the oven out we to remove this bottom uh, trim work there's a bottom trim piece here that has a screw here and a screw in the opposite corner. So we'll take those two screws out, remove this bottom frame, and then once we've taken the bottom frame out and have it cleared, then we should be clear to pull the oven out slowly. Now, this double oven, as I said in the uh, documentation, weighs about 230 pounds, so I'm not about to try to lift that myself. I do have my son with me as a helper who is extremely strong. He's gonna help me set this thing out. Now we only need to pull it out far enough where I can access the top once we pull it out. It's not in the back. The uh, blower that we're gonna replace is in the top essentially behind that control panel. So we're gonna give that a try. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the oven on a platform that's approximately the height of that drawer, which is about 18 inches. And it just so happens, say hi to Boomer. Hi Boomer, and yeah, he runs off at the camera. We're gonna use this as our balancing uh, tray here. This is a hardwood, plywood thing I made for a step stool for our dog when he was younger, <laughs> but he never would use it, that this will serve as a base to receive the oven long enough for us to balance it so we can access the top. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these two screws out here at the bottom and remove this bottom trim. Uh, what I did is I, I've taken the installation documents for this original uh, for this original oven and I'm basically reversing the steps starting with getting this bottom trim out. It makes a special point that if you don't take this bottom trim out first and you pull the oven out, you'll damp, you'll you'll uh, you'll create some superficial damage to the outdoor. And I don't want to do that. Screw number one. Here's screw number two. Okay. And it takes off the bottom tray, so we'll set it aside. Bottom tray. All right. So that sets that aside. So now this is clear. So the next step is to remove the doors. So what I have is a square head. That I believe will get the job done. Just like that. Perfect. And we will repeat the process over here. screws removed. Okay, now what happened is as I took out the screw on the other side, the screw fell and I can't see where it fell. It must have fallen in near the bottom trim so we can get it when we get the oven out. Uh, but on this side, we've got the, uh, the latch release. So now the instructions say to rotate this forward. And that's what I've done on the other side. So they're both the same. And then to rotate the door handle, the door up almost to the closed position and then slide it out. So now, if I've done this correctly, we should be able to rotate the door up. There. Out. Pretty easy, please. Okay, I realize the lighting in here isn't ideal, but we'll go ahead and try to do the best we can. What we have now is we have four frame screws. One right here, one right here, one right here, and then one right here. And also, because this thing is cotton picking heavy, and uh, not that it would uh, soften a great bit of the blow if something catastrophic happened and we dropped this thing, I'm at least putting on some uh, rubber sneakers, not doing this barefoot. Uh, and I'm also gonna have this platform roll under here to receive this oven to get to the, to get to the block. So we'll go ahead and remove these four screws and then we will get my son in here and we'll try to slide this puppy out. So now our plan is with the frame screws released, we're going to get my son in here, we're going to gently pull this thing out and then in our endeavor is to rest it on this frame here such that it will allow me to access the top. Take the top off, remove the blower and replace it. So what we're going to do is try to grab this thing and see if we are anywhere close to getting it loose.
little bit. Back up on the frame. Well, just more on the, the block. Oh, okay. There. There we go. Oh yeah, that's good and solid. All right. All right. So got the oven out, and now we're going to work on. We'll bring the camera over here, and I'll show you how we're going to get to this back access panel to get that blower replaced. The blower motor that we're looking to replace is right under here. So I see these two hex head nuts to remove this top panel. And I see some, we may have to remove these nuts to get this panel off so that we can relieve this panel. So we may have some screws to unbolt. Those are all hex heads. So let me get a proper, uh, proper uh, nut driver, nut, a proper head for the uh, uh, branch and we'll get those guys off. Okay, reviewing this further, I'm afraid that we may also have to take off this, in order to free this cover, this is all one molded aluminum piece back here, and I think to get this off, we're gonna have to take this off. And there are several, uh, probably 10, 12 screws that we're gonna have to take out to free up the space where the blower is contained. So, we'll uh, get after it. Okay, we found us a There's one, two, three, four, five, On the floor. Get. Thanks, sir. I'm going to reach over here and grab this guy. Oops. Just realized my finger is in the way. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> the hazards of single handed photography. Thank you. The ever handy paper cup to hold in all the screws that we've taken off so far. They're on the other side too. Yeah, and we and Mr. Matthew is gonna go over there and grab the other ones for us. So now, with all those screws out, let's see if we can get this top part off, and it's gone. So far, so good. That is our destination. That rotten little blower motor right there, but we don't quite yet have access to it. We're going to have to take more screws off. So, you going to disconnect this guy? Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to avoid taking that off if I can. Uh, Oh yeah, these screws, okay, the back of this panel slides in behind this, so I think if we remove so, these three screws right here, is this folded panel slides in behind this panel, so if you remove this screw, it's captive and holds the middle panel in. If we take these three screws out across, we'll still be able to lift this up. I think that'll do the trick. Yep. Perfect. There's one on the top over here. Do you want me to get this one? Hang on one second. Okay, I think if I've got my guess, you got the camera going there? Yeah. Okay, if I've got this right. Screw it. There's, there's one, oh, okay, I think never if mind. I got this yeah, right, I fine. should be able to remove this and we now have access to the blower. Yeehaw. <laughs> Folks, we have won half the battle already. Looks like it just 
There's a quick guy, dis right here. there's a quick disconnect fitting. And that's the ground. Uh, the yeah, ground. that's gonna be a, that's that's gonna be ground. Here's a quick disconnect, and uh, this would disconnect here into the little, this is a little control board here. So those two fittings will need to disconnect, and then then it's a matter of just figuring out how uh, right. it looks like. Here, let's compare it. Let's compare it to our new motor. Hang on a second. Like unto so, it's mounted on a little base, a little mounting base right here. So what I'm thinking may be the case, I'm betting that it is mounted with screws. These two screws hold this base into the top of the oven, but I'll bet you there are screws underneath this that secure the bottom screws, the, the bottom of the fan to the bracket. So what we're going to need to do is disconnect the, the uh, connectors and then loosen this screw and there's probably one just like it on the other side. So, so how does this exactly cool the oven down? Uh, it just takes uh, it takes heat and, and, and there's a duct work that goes straight down the back and then out oh. the front and out the bottom. Okay. So, uh, yawn drill. Let's see here. go there's one don't do what I started I started to lean on it don't do that <laughs> and once again let me reiterate we have cut power to the oven at the breaker box so there's no risk of any electrical discharge here got to be absolutely careful you don't want to risk uh, serious electrical injury working on this thing so you got that loose yep. all right so now all we need to do is release this little quick disconnect this Quick disconnect, it says. Ha, ah, there's one. If you take. Oh, should I unscrew the ground? No, uh, oh, yeah, we will need to unscrew the ground. Good catch. Excellent catch. <laughs> uh, I think it squeezes here and comes loose that way. There. And then we need to release this wiring harness from there. So now, okay, there's definitely something still holding this puppy in. Okay, further inspection of our assembly here. This is now loose, but something is still holding it in place. Well, appearing back behind this panel shows that there is another, it's very hard to show here in the video, but there's another bracket that has a couple of screws that's, that are held captive that holds that bracket in place. And I think that's what's obstructing us. The only problem with that is we got a whole bunch more screws to take off. All of these in this back panel are going to have to take off. Now go down. You're on the power. Thing. Oh, it won't go any farther. Well, here now. Now try it. There we go. Ha ha. All right. There's a screw we need right there. Excuse me, right there. That's one screw to release it, and this is the other screw to release it. And something else I notice is that there is a bit of a collection of some grease or goo or something under here that would indicate something has collected up there that probably shouldn't have. Not doing this a little bit on the fly. We're removing, rather than try to remove these bolts that are holding this uh, to the bracket, we're gonna remove these two screws that are holding the whole bracket captive to the top of the oven. And if that doesn't come right up like that. There we go. And now just to make sure we can compare these, we have identical connectors, identical ground wire, uh, identical wire colors. Uh, no, we're, we're good, we're good, we're identical. I was thinking there was a difference in one of the connectors, but not so. 
so. And there's the connector for the uh, sensor. This is a control board. Now sometimes these control boards will go out too. The sensor that reports back whether it can engage these fans will go out. So uh, that gets replaced with this. There's no point in just replacing this if there's a possibility the whole fan's with So now it's just a matter of reversing the process. And now we're going to have to remove this bracket. This is what we. And then we will definitely want to retain these washers. One, two, three. Actually, what am I doing? Yeah, I was We're gonna ask why you're I'm being I'm being stupid. <laughs> don't, don't take those out. <laughs> okay. So now we will take this guy and we will make sure that we're oriented the same way, and we will simply put this bracket in its place and let's see Because we can see, because oh no. we could see that arc. We can, yeah, we can see the arc, and then from the back, it's going to be like this. So, because this, and I just remember, this is where we saw the, uh, and this is where that arced bolt was, and this is where the direct, the oily residue around that one screw was, and this would be like we're looking at it from the back. So, we'll put that right there. Well, we could always pause the video if you wanted to look it up, verify. Uh, I think we're okay because the, the connectors have to come out this way, so this has to be the back. Okay, there, all right. So now, we can go slide this puppy back in. Okay, we transferred our ground screw, we verified our connectors, verified that this is the correct part, matching as best we can tell. So we will move these connectors here and just slide this bracket right back where it was before. Perfect. And we'll just get some of these screws, two screws, and put them back together. One, there's two. Okay, next. Oh, are you mad at Daddy and Bubba? They're making unauthorized noise. Come here. 
Come here. You want to go outside for a little bit? Get away from daddy and mother? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Just a little bit. Get away from daddy and mother. Come on. Come on, and that way you don't have to see daddy and mother. So we're just now putting this other two screws back in the brackets. And that is our basset hound, Mr. Boomer, who is fussing because we're harsh and his mellow. And it's also pretty close to his normal supper time. And he definitely doesn't like all these strange noises. Okay, this is a little bit close quarters here. There we go. I think we're in. So now, next thing we will do is we'll reconnect our ground. Well, I say that's ground. I'm reasonably sure that's ground. I don't know what else it would be. this quick disconnect connected and then we will reattach this guy oh no okay to the very point of making sure that I check that the two pieces are identical I overlooked something obvious and that's the very control board that I pointed out before I was so convinced that it would be part of the assembly uh, just like the windings on the stupid thing I didn't even bother to look but it's not there and I've got to get an allen uh, key to get that that's a star nut I've got to get a small star nut to drive that out so and this is not going to fit so I'll be right back and get the right size star nut okay I actually found an Allen wrench and I can't even tell you what size it is if you're watching you may recognize what size it is there and I just dropped it on the floor so there's a screw I move my light over here ah, okay this is not gonna be too bad I can manage to avoid dropping the screw. <laughs> Perfect. This is extremely difficult to start with your left hand when you're right handed. There, got it. Ha. Okay. And then we now, where we were a few minutes ago, just plug in that connector. And now it's a matter of reassembly. Just put everything back the way we found it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to put the uh, back panel back on and put those screws back in. It needs to go your direction some because there's an old T 
teeth right here that it slides into that we're not on. There, there's no there. there. We got it? Yeah. screws on my side. I think you got the rest of them on your side. Okay. Here, give me. Is there one that's supposed to go right here? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I got to take these back out because we realized these two screws hold the flap for this flange in. Uh, it's, they're captive, so I gotta take these back out. We made a minor mistake. We started putting in these two screws first until we realized that this flap, this top flange slides in back and that screw holds it captive. Had to take those back out. So we're gonna put in all the other screws first. Sir? Okay, there's one. All the ones we can put in until we put in the top, the top shelf. Around the microwave. And now we will carefully put this guy right back here. I'm kind of doing this blind on my side. Are we need, need anything to guide it in on your side? I think this needs to go over, right? Not, or is, is it, oh. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Uh, let me have uh, two screws to start. That's two. Okay, I need... Go ahead and give me... So now all that's left are the screws for the top, for this top flange. So we'll put this top piece in here. Perfect. So I need two screws and then we one, two, three across the back. So probably five, uh, seven screws total.
Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so let's take a quick inventory, see if there are any missing holes. Because he says we still have one screw. Now I didn't have to take off anything beyond that. We have no empty holes back here. And I never took anything off below this point right here. Okay, we inventoried our screws and we found one more screw that we hadn't overlooked before. So we're going to get that puppy in. It's real shady in here. So we'll try to get our light. Perfect. Alrighty. So folks, we're all reconnected. Sliding this back into the hole is simply is something we're going to have to do at a distance. We're not going to be able to get very good detail or up close uh, photo of it. So we're going to do the best that we can. Uh, now, let's see. They obviously already had that going this way. So I don't know of anything to do short of just let it go the way it did. So we're going to slide this back up. Just a maybe just a smudge, but not much. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, hang on. Time out. Time out. Okay. Go your way. Just a smudge. My way. Pull my way. Yeah, just a little bit. That's it. That's it. Okay. Back in. Yeah. how closely we lined up to our original hole. We're perfect. We lined the right smack with our original hole. Hot, stinking dog. What we've been dealing with here on the door is to make sure that these hinges are in the down and locked position, locked open. If they're not locked all the way open, then it will not hold while you secure this indentation on this latch over the bottom edge of the door and then allow this top tooth to connect inside this slot. Or describe it a different way, the hinge fits in this slot, this top tooth connects inside the slot and this ridge hooks on the bottom. And then there's a little bracket that you, you put into this guy that attaches it to the frame. So what I had to do is I had to force this back out and engage the locking mechanism and now we're okay. Now it should slide back in. That's how it's supposed to work. And now what we need to do is reattach the brackets. Okay. There we go. So here's the up close for that bracket on the top of the hinge that locks it all into place. And we're good to go. This door is now secured and the lower half is done. One in. And
done. Close her up. Perfect. Okay, all that's left to do is go turn on the breaker and see if we can turn it on. It came back on, so only thing I have to do is to test it and see if we can heat start this oven. And I immediately felt air coming out. Okay, we're gonna let this, give this a few minutes to heat up and we'll uh, check back in here shortly. Well folks, it's a few minutes later and now our temperature is climbing great. We are well past where the clock tells us that we've been running for four minutes now that since we reapplied power and the temperature's going up just fine. Well, the oven continues to warm up and we'll put a bow on this project. Uh, this is really, as a practical matter, it's a two-person job. Man maneuvering that oven out of the cavity is uh, not something trivial that you need to have a good solid base to work on and it happens to have an extra pair of hands to hold on to things when you're moving bolts and moving screws around. Uh, but we definitely got it done. The, uh, what I neglected to mention at the start of the video was that this is a GE JT3500 SF3 model, uh, SS for stainless steel at the end, but JT3500 SF, uh, San Francisco 3 SS. They stopped making this oven about a year ago. Uh, we put this in two and a half years ago when we remodeled our kitchen and uh, unfortunately the blower failed but replacing the blower seems to have fixed it uh, this has been a great job it's been a little bit uh, sweat inspiring but hey that's the way it goes uh, i think this has been a success it is a doable job it is doable by yourself the motor from a local parts supplier cost 74 dollars i found the place uh, online from the part genuine GE part for about 52 but they wanted 20 to ship it overnight which would have been over the weekend because this actually failed on Friday so we wouldn't have gotten the part any quicker and I was able to route the money to some local business so uh, uh, hope this was a useful video to you if you have this kind of an oven if you see that code you have a good idea of what might be uh, the problem undertake proper cautions make sure you kill the power uh, have a buddy to help you if you possibly can. Uh, uh, leave your comments, criticisms, questions, and observations down below. We appreciate all of our followers and viewers. And uh, remember, guys, if it's worth doing it all, it's worth doing it yourself. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.